Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker pop wheat and Quaker pop rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Wow, there goes another mighty tree for those rugged lumberjacks to haul down Sergeant Preston's Yukon Trail. Just think if you were a lumberjack, what stamina it would take. What good nourishing breakfast you'd eat. Start now to build up your stamina. At breakfast, always eat a heaping bowlful of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fresh fruit. Like, for instance, luscious red ripe strawberries. Remember, wheat or rice shot from guns gives you added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. And delicious, taste them. You just can't beat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston was driving his team along Dominion Creek one morning when he was hailed by a miner who had just emerged from his cabin. Hey, Sergeant! Logan! Hi, oh, 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 oh. Now, Chad Logan, what are you doing out here? I brought myself a claim a couple of weeks ago. I'm mighty glad you came by this way. Something wrong? I'll tell the world there's something wrong. I got swindled. Swindled? On your claim? That's right. And I'm hoping you can tell me what to do about it. Well, who sold you the claim? A gent named Uriah Flint. Ever hear of him? He's a mine broker in Dawson. Mine swindlers, more like it. Cheated me out of 5,000 bucks. That's what he did. Didn't you examine the claim before you bought it? Sure, I examined it. But Flint salted it with just enough gold to make me think it was worth the price. Well, I'm afraid the only thing you can do is take the case to court, Chet. Even then, I doubt if you can win a judgment against him. <laughs> that dirty pork. Uriah Flint thinks he's pretty slick. But I've got a few tricks up my sleeve, too. If I can't have the law on him, I'll figure out some other way to make him cough up. Uriah Flint was a shrewd and grasping businessman. But in spite of his cunning, he had one notorious weakness. Like many another speculator, he was intensely superstitious. And it was well known in Dawson that he never made an important move without first consulting an old fortune teller known as Granny Foss. On the day after Chet's conversation with Sergeant Preston... Uriah Flint was seated in his office talking to his nephew, Joe Bassett. Joe was saying, That was a mighty smart stroke of business you did, Uncle Uriah, <laughs> buying up those claims on Borealis Creek. <laughs> yeah, yes, indeed. I'll be able to sell those claims for ten times what I paid for them. Say, uh, seeing as how you'll be making such a profit, I, uh, I wonder if you could advance me a thousand dollars. What? Thousand dollars? That's, that's four months' salary. What do you think I am, the Bank of England? You can spare that much, Uncle Uriah. I need the money pretty bad. I suppose you're in debt again to those gamblers down at the Gold Nugget. Well, as far as I'm concerned, they can whistle for their money. But listen, Uncle Uriah, I... Shh, quiet, quiet. Oh, it's you, Logan. You bet your boots it's me, you double-dealing polecat. That's uh, mighty strong language. Yeah. And it'll get a lot stronger if you don't hand over the 5,000 bucks I paid you for that claim. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. That claim you sold me was salted. Can't prove that. I'm warning you, Flint. You'd better give me back my money or you're going to be mighty sorry. Oh, is that a threat? No. Just a word to the wise. Meaning what? Meaning you're going to find this climate mighty unhealthy. 
If I don't get my money back inside of the next 48 hours, think it over. Uh, I'm giving you 48 hours to hand over that money. As Chet Logan walked out the door, Uriah Flint took out a large bandana and mopped his forehead nervously. I don't like the way he was talking. It sounded like he meant business. Uh, what do you suppose he's up to? I don't know, but he seemed mighty sure of himself. Uh, maybe I'd better not take any chances. What are you going to do? I'll drop around and see what Granny Foss can read in the cards. Granny Foss was an old crone who had spent the better part of her life moving from one mining camp to another. In her younger days, she had been famous as a lady gambler. But as age and drink took their toll, she was forced to eke out a squalid existence by cadging handouts and telling fortunes. She was seated in her cabin, idly shuffling a greasy deck of cards when she heard a knock at the door. Oh, come in. Well, 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 if it isn't my old friend Uriah Flint. Have a chair, have a chair. Oh, thank you. I suppose you've got another business deal in the making, and no, you've I, come to consult old Granny Foss about the outlook, eh? It's not a business deal this time, at least not exactly. I'm having trouble with a client. Oh, so that's it. Oh, well, I suppose we just lay out the cards, and uh, we shall see what we shall see. Yes, yes. Oh, here, you, you cut the deck. All right. Uh, now... Now, let's see what the cards have to say. With the smooth, expert oh, gestures of a professional card oh, shop, diamond. Granny Foss began laying out the cards on the table. As she did so, Uriah mm. Flint noticed that her face took on a sudden look of dismay. Oh, well, uh, what, what? Don't think I'd better give you a reading today. What's the matter? I don't feel quite in the mood. Don't lie to me. You've seen something in the cards. Uh, what is it? All right, if you insist. Take a look at the King of Diamonds. Yes, yes. That's you. Now take a look at what's just above it. The, the Queen of Space. Yes, the Black Lady. The Angel of Death. What? She's hovering right over you, Uriah Flint. Good Scott. Does that mean that I... I'm going to... Maybe. Maybe not. The cards look bad. That's all I'll say. Well, very well. Oh, here... Here's your money. Oh, thank you kindly, Mr. Flynn. Good, good day. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Granny Foss was still chuckling to herself several moments later when the door opened and Chet Logan entered the cabin. Well, how about it? Did you throw a scare into the old buzzard? Did I throw a scare into him? <laughs> I spooked him so bad he, he was shaking like a leaf. Good work, Granny. Here's that 25 bucks I promised you. Oh, thank you. And if he comes in again, give him another dose of the same oh, medicine. Sure, Chet. Sure I will. After Uriah Flint returned to his office, he saw through the window that Chet Logan had taken up a position across the street and was waiting patiently and menacingly. By the following day, the strain had begun to tell on Uriah Flint's nerves. He decided to go to mounted police headquarters. Sergeant Preston was seated at his desk with the great dog Yukon King stretched out on the floor beside his chair. Oh, hello, Flint. Sergeant, Sergeant, I demand protection. A man named Chet Logan has threatened my life. Exactly how has he threatened he you? He says if I don't give him back his money by tomorrow, I'll be, well, uh, mighty sorry. Oh, that's rather vague. I tell you, this is dead serious. Logan is keeping watch on me constantly. Trails me around every time I leave the office. He even followed me here to headquarters. In that case, let's go out and talk to him. Where is he? Right. Uh, he was here just a minute ago. Maybe so, but he's nowhere in sight now. Meanwhile, Joe Bassett had gone to the Gold Nugget Cafe. He sat down at the table of a gambler named Ace Gorham. Ace greeted him coldly. Well, Bassett, have you got that thousand bucks you owe me? No, the old tightwad wouldn't give it to me. You know what happens to gents who don't pay their gambling debts? Uh, now, now, wait a minute, Ace. 
I've got a proposition to make you. What kind of a proposition? How would you like to earn $5,000 over and above the 1000 I already owe you? Earn it how? Uncle Uriah is worth at least 100000 If anything should happen to him, I'd inherit that money. Keep talking. A couple of weeks ago, he sold a solid claim to a man named Chet Logan. So now Logan's out to get him. He says if my uncle doesn't give him back his money by tomorrow, it'll be just too bad. So? If you were to kill my uncle, I'd be sure to inherit his dough. And the murder would be blamed on Chet Logan. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Well, how about it? I'm offering you 5000 bucks for the job. Sure, Bassett. I'll take that offer. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. There's nothing like it. Yes, there's nothing like the big moment out at the old ballpark when... Folks, this is it. The ball game's all tied up, the fans are going crazy, and here it comes, that big three and two pitch. The batter swings. There goes the ball. Back, back, back. It's a home run. Yes, moments like this stand out. There's nothing like it. And for breakfast, nothing stands out like a heaping bowl of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice. Just pour on some milk or cream and top with sweet, juicy red strawberries or other fruit. You'll say this is it. Stand out. Stand out in flavor, crispness. That's because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are giant king-size kernels. They're the premium grains of flavor-rich wheat or rice. And they're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Bigger and better tasting. And like the batter that comes through with a solid base hit, wheat and rice shot from guns deliver solid nourishment. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. So ask for crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Get them right away because there are eight different new packages with Sergeant Preston Yukon Trail cutout models. You get exciting models of Sergeant Preston's dog sled and team of huskies, the White Horse Jail, Gold Mining Camp, Sergeant Preston's cabin. Actually, a total of 59 models that are larger, easier to build, amazingly different. So hurry, they're at your grocer's now. Yukon Trail packages of the one and only Quaker Puff Rice and Quaker Puff Wheat. Shot from guns. Now to continue. On the evening after Uriah Flint had returned from his visit to Mounted Police Headquarters, Uriah and his nephew were eating supper in their living quarters up over the mine broker's office. So Chet Logan vamoosed when you went to Mounted Headquarters, huh? Mm, that's right, but he won't get away. Preston has sent out word to the city patrol to be on the lookout for him. Why don't you drop around and see what Granny Foss has to say? Mm, huh? Maybe the angel of death isn't hovering over you anymore now that Logan's cleared out. Um, I thunder it's not a bad idea at that. I'll go around and see her right after supper. Maybe I'd better go along with you, Uncle, just in case Logan should turn up and make trouble. Mighty thoughtful of you, Joe. Mighty thoughtful. But don't think you're going to soft soap me into lending you that thousand dollars, because your little scheme won't work. It was nearly an hour later. The soft glow of an oil lamp lit up the interior of Granny Foss's rickety cabin as the old woman laid out the cards. Uriah Flint leaned forward with tense interest to hear what the future held in store, while Joe Bassett looked on in cynical amusement. Oh. Well, well what, 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 what do you see? Hmm? You're sure you want me to tell you? Of course I'm sure. Why else do you think I came here? Oh, it's bad, Mr. Flint. Very bad. On one side of the king is the seven of spades. Yes, yes. And on the other side is the ace of spades. Well, uh, what, uh, what does that mean? The seven of spades is a sign of bad luck. Oh? And the ace of spades... Yes, yes. ...is for 
stick in your grave. Good heavens, Uncle Uriah, you're as white as a sheet. I, I'll, I'll be all right. You've given him a terrible shock. I only tell what I see in the car. Well, you'd better come on home right away, Uncle. Yes, you're, you're right. Oh, here. Here's your money. Thank you kindly, Mr. Glenn. Here, let me help you, Uncle Uriah. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Joe Bassett opened the door there. for his uncle, shielding himself Don't behind the door as he did so and leaving Uriah Flint silhouetted in the lighted doorway. At that moment, a shot rang out. Oh, 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 he's been shot. Yes, and there goes the murder. I just caught a glimpse of him. By thunder, I'm going after him. At this moment, Sergeant Preston was seated in his office at Mounted Police Headquarters when the door opened and Chet Logan came in with his arm firmly gripped by Constable Alex Ross. All right, in you go, Logan. All right, all right. Where'd you find him, Alex? Over at the Maple Leaf Cafe. Just finishing supper. Now, what's the idea of having me picked up this way, Sergeant? What do you think? Oh, I suppose it's because of what Uriah Flint told you. Well, he says you threatened his life. I was just trying to throw a scare into him. I figured if I got him worked up enough, he'd hand over my money. Oh, that's what I thought. Well, you're not going to jug me just for doing that, are you? Not for long, Chet, but I'll have to hold you until Flint can get over here. After that, we'll see if we can't straighten out this mess. All right, let's go, Logan. All right, I'm going. Constable Ross put Chet Logan in a cell and then reported back to Sergeant Preston. Should I go get your eye of Flint, Sergeant? Yes, tell him we found Chet Logan. If he wants to prefer charges against him, he'll have to come here to headquarters. Uh -huh. Come in. Why, it's Joe Bassett. Sergeant, you've got to come right away. What's wrong? My uncle's just been shot. Just a minute, I'll get my parker. Your uncle dead? Not yet, but he may be soon. How long ago did it happen? About ten minutes ago, and I know who did it. Who? Chet Logan. Chet Logan? That's... Epic. Hold it, Alex. You sure it was Logan? Positive. I got a glimpse of him running away. In fact, I chased after him. But you didn't catch him. No, no, he got away. So then I went for a doctor, and then I came straight here to headquarters. All right, let's go. Alex, you'd better come with me. Right, Sergeant. Come along, King. <laughs> A short time later, the three men arrived at Granny Foss's cabin. The doctor had just finished attending to Uriah Flint. How is he, doctor? Well, everything considered, he's in pretty fair shape. You, you mean he'll live? Yes, I think so. The wound was serious, but not fatal. However, you'd better not move him for a few days. Not move him? Uh, but what about me? I'll get you to a room at the hotel, Granny. Well, I'll be going now. I'll look in again tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Bye, doctor. Bye. As the doctor left the cabin, Sergeant Preston turned toward the wounded man on the cot. You feel strong enough to talk, Uriah? I guess so. No thanks for that clumsy sawbones. Now tell me, did you get a glimpse of the person who shot you? No, but I know who did it. I've already told you, Sergeant. I caught a glimpse of the man who shot Uncle Uriah. It was Chet Logan. There, oh. you hear that? By thunder, I'll pay a reward of $5,000 to anyone who brings that man to justice. Now let me get this straight. Bye. You're offering a $5,000 reward for the capture of the man who shot you. That's right. Very well. One more question. Do you have any other relatives besides Joe? None living, thank heavens. Why? Just curious, that's all. Well, Alex, we better get busy. You think King will be able to pick up a cent? Yes, if Joe will show us where the gunman was standing. Why, why sure. He was standing uh, right over there in that clump of trees. It's awfully dark over there. Are you sure you recognize Logan? Well, yeah. At least I thought I did. Come on, Alex. We'll see if King can get the scent. Right, Sergeant. In the meantime, Uncle Uriah, I'll go back to our place and get some things to make you more comfortable. The two Mounties went to the clump of trees which Joe Bassett had pointed out, but King seemed unable to pick up a scent. Meanwhile, Sergeant Preston was watching Joe as he walked away from the cabin. Sergeant, Chet Logan couldn't have shot Flint. Why don't you tell him that we already have him in custody? Joe Bassett's obviously lying, and I want to find out why. Oh. You think he had something to do with the shooting? As Uriah Flint's only relative, he stands to inherit the old man's money. Hmm. Well, Alex, Joe Bassett's nearly out of sight. I want you to follow him, find out where he goes and whom he talks to. Report back to headquarters immediately. I have a plan that should prove whether or not Bassett's guilty. All right, Sergeant. Joe Bassett went to the Gold Nugget Cafe, where Ace Gorham was waiting for him. Well, how about it? Is the old man dead? No, you only wounded him. What? What's more, I think Sergeant Preston's suspicious. That's not so good. We'll have to do the job again and do it right. How? My uncle's still at Granny Foss's cabin. I want you to come back there with me. 
but hide somewhere outside while I go in. Go on. I'll tell Granny Foss I'm going to take her down to the hotel and get her a room. As soon as we leave, you rush in the cabin and kill Uncle Uriah and duck out the back way. Granny and I will hear the shot and come running back. It'll look as though Logan came around to finish the job. And once again, I'll have a perfect alibi. I get you. Joe and Ace didn't know that Constable Ross had seen them through the window of the cafe, and that he had rushed back to headquarters to inform Sergeant Preston. When the two men left the cafe a short time later, they first went to Uriah Flint's living quarters to get the various items which Joe had promised to bring his uncle. Then they headed toward Granny Foss's cabin on the outskirts of town. As they approached the cabin through the darkness, Joe suddenly laid a hand on his companion's arm. Hey, wait. Uh, Someone's standing in front of Granny Foss's cabin. Yeah. I can see him by the light coming through the window. Holy smoke, I think it's Chet Logan. Logan? You stay back here out of sight. I'll go up and talk to him. If I raise my hand and push back the hood of my parka, that'll be a signal for you to come and join us. With your gun handy. Right. As Joe Bassett approached the cabin, he saw that the man really was Chet Logan. Hello there, Bassett. Why, Thunder Logan, you've got plenty of nerve. Don't you realize the Mounties are after you for shooting my uncle? Don't make me laugh, Bassett. It was Ace Gorham who shot your uncle, and you hired him to do it. What's that? As he spoke, Joe Bassett raised his hand and pushed back the hood of his parka. You heard me, Bassett. You hired Ace Gorham to kill your uncle. And it's going to cost you plenty to keep me from talking to the police. At that moment, the figure of Ace Gorham loomed up through the darkness. Get your hands up, Logan. What? So you brought your gun slick along with you, huh, Bassett? What's the dope, Joe? This gent knows too much. We'll have to shut him up for keeps. Come on, we'll go inside the cabin. All right, get moving, Logan. So you captured Logan. Yeah, we captured him, all right. I'm afraid he's not going to wind up behind bars, Uncle Uriah. Why not? Because we're going to kill him. And you, too. Uh, what's that? You crazy? Far from it. With you dead, I'll inherit your money. And Logan will be blamed for the murder. Joe, put down that gun. Sorry, Uncle. Oh, wait a minute, you... Joe. How are we going to work this? We're going to kill all three of them, and then no, we're going to call... No, no, you've got no reason to kill me. Shut up, you old hag. Like I say, we'll kill all three of them. I'll claim Logan did it and say I caught him red-handed and shot him. Hey, that's a smart idea. I'll we'll finish you off first, Uncle Uriah. Stop those guns! Sergeant Preston! I'll fix him! Ah. Preston's bullet blasted the gun from Joe's hand, and then the sergeant turned to cover Ace Gorham. Come here, you! But Ace had grabbed Chet Logan and was using him as a shield. You don't take me, Preston! The sergeant had dropped to the floor, and the bullet flattened itself in the cabin wall. Before Ace could fire again, King charged forward to attack. Stop! Get out of here! The great dog's fangs closed on Ace's gun arm. Ace dropped his gun with a scream of pain and again tried to use Chet as a shield, this time to protect himself from King. At the same time, Joe leaped at Sergeant Preston. I'll get you, Preston. Oh, no, you don't. Joe Bassett fought like a cornered rat, but he was no match for Sergeant Preston. In a few moments, the sergeant's fists had pounded him into submission. No, no, don't hit me again, I swear. Meanwhile, King's savage lunges had forced Ace to let go of Chet Logan. The latter had wrenched himself free and picked up Ace's gun. I reckon you're through too, Gorham. So get your hands up high before I plug you. Sure, sure, I give up. Don't shoot. Just get this dog away from me. Steady, King. Down, boy. Good work, Chet. As for you two, you're under arrest in the name of the Crown. Sergeant, for the love of heaven, tell me what this is all about. Ace Gorham, there's the man who shot you, and your nephew hired him to do it. But I... I thought Chet Logan shot me. That's what Joe Bassett expected us to think. But it so happens Chet Logan couldn't have shot you because he was under arrest at the time it happened. What's that? Yes, Joe. When you met Logan outside the cabin, it was all part of a prearranged plan. I figured you'd try to get rid of him, and you didn't disappoint me. You fool, Joe. I should have known better to hook up with you. Incidentally, Flint, you offered a reward of $5,000 for the capture of the man who shot you. Yes, but, dagnabbit, I thought... It was Chet Logan who made the capture possible and kept these two from finishing the job they didn't complete. That 5000 also happens to be the exact amount Chet paid you for that worthless claim. Oh, well, uh, all right, all right. I guess he's got it coming to him. <laughs> you told me I couldn't win a judgment against him, Sergeant. But by thunder, it looks like you got my money back for me anyway. Well, King, now that that's settled, this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Six-Gun Clue.
Here's a clue to finding the breakfast dish that everyone in the family enjoys. Just look for the famous picture of the smiling Quaker man on the red and blue package of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. He's your guarantee of getting the original, crisp, fresh wheat and rice shot from guns. There's nothing quite like their tender crispness, their tempting nut-like flavor. And no wonder, because the choice premium grains of wheat and rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size. At breakfast every morning, let the whole family pour out big bowlfuls from the convenient non-tipping package of Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Let them pour on milk or cream and Top with juicy ripe red strawberries or other fruit for a wonderful deluxe treat that's economical. And very nourishing. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice give the whole family extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns comes only in the large red and blue package. A fine modern package with a sealed inner lining. That wonderful lining doubly protects the flavor and crispness until the very moment you serve it. For that reason, Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is never sold in bags or bulk. Buy both delicious kinds tomorrow. And now, here's Sergeant Preston. You sent for me, Inspector? Oh, yes, Sergeant. A man named Stan Tyler has disappeared. The only clue we have is a six-gun with a carved silver grip. The gun belonged to Tyler? That's right. Turned up in a poker game at the Mad Dog Cafe in Nuggetville. So the trail will begin there. I want you to find Stan Tyler. Very well, sir. I'll start for Nuggetville right away. Let's go, King. <laughs> What's behind the mystery of Stan Tyler's disappearance? Has he been murdered, or is he still alive? And if so, why has he vanished? There may be desperate men in Nuggetville who know the answer. Men who will stop at nothing to keep Sergeant Preston from uncovering their deadly secret. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice.